Hello everybody, Maven here, and some of you guys may remember my Sun Bracers Perfected video that I did a few months ago. And, uh, well, I guess with all the changes and reworks this season, it's no longer perfected, right? But it is perfected once again with a lot of new changes this season. Two in particular that I really want to highlight in this video really make this build something crazy. So we're going to break that down. Don't forget to drop a like, and I hope you enjoy. So the way that this build came to be is I was experimenting with the reworked firepower mod, which generates an orb of power on grenade final blows. So I was thinking to myself, how can I make a ton of grenade final blows? Of course, none other than the sun bracers. You're spamming infinite grenades, you're making tons of orbs of power on every single nade kill, which is going to contribute to your own super cooldown, your teammates super cooldowns. It's going to contribute to armor charge and a bunch of your ability cooldowns. It does so much. And this alone makes the Sun Bracers very high tier now, but there's more to talk about. There are, of course, artifact mods, which we'll get to in a bit, but first we gotta talk about the fragments. There are a few reworked slash brand new fragments added to Solar 3.0 this season, a couple of which we are abusing with this build. The first that we're gonna talk about is Ember of Resolve, Solar Grenade Final Blows Cure You. And the Sun Bracers, where it always suffered, was survivability. But now when you're up in the air throwing grenades all over the place, each grenade healing you is going to be pretty insane for survivability. And I say it in every single build video, but survivability is the key to a good PvE build. Now, believe it or not, Ember of Resolve is only our secondary form of survivability. And another secondary form of survivability is on our boots. It's called Recuperation. Since we're making so many orbs with firepower on those grenade final blows, picking them up is going to give us a chunk of health back as well. Now, our primary way of restoration is going to be Ember of Empyrean. Solar weapon or ability final blows extend the duration of your restoration. However, Cure does not count as restoration and we are not running Ember of Mercy, so how are we going to get Restoration? Now that is going to be through Phoenix Dive. Now Phoenix Dive, when you activate it, it cures you. But with the aspect Heat Rises, when you Phoenix Dive, instead it makes your Phoenix Dive grant you three seconds of Restoration. And then if you can proceed to get a solar ability or a weapon final blow in those three seconds, you extend the duration of that restoration up to a maximum of 12 seconds, and you can keep it going forever so long as you're getting solar weapon or ability final blows. Now this is another massive buff that really contributes to this build survivability because I talked about this a little bit in my last Sun Bracers Perfected build a couple seasons ago, but I thought it was a bug because it was so subtle, like it didn't really count. So what happened is when you Phoenix Dive with Heat Rises, you would get one second of restoration, just one, and you would have to Phoenix Dive right on the head of an enemy and hope that Phoenix Dive kills them. And if you manage to, you get to extend that restoration. But now there's such a huge window of leeway. You get three seconds to get that solar final blow and extend the restoration. It is so much easier to extend the restoration forever and just survive non-stop and if you were running ember of solace it would extend the restoration to five seconds giving you a bigger window of time to have the chance to extend the restoration with ember of empyrean and also phoenix dive got another buff it has a quicker cooldown and also it does more damage when you slam down on enemies so it's very very good now this build has the capability of just activating infinite restoration on command and i'll show you an example of why this is so good i can simply pop heat rises Phoenix dive in place and then proceed to get a solar machine gun final blow or whatever solar weapon. And you can just extend that restoration, get it up to that 12 second mark and then proceed to go and slay out with that infinite restoration. It is so good to be able to have it just whenever you want it. But another way that I tend to activate this infinite restoration is I proc heat rises and then I get that solar melee final blow to start the sun bracers chain. And then I nade a target and then I proceed to Phoenix Dive down on top of them. And the combination of the Nade plus the Phoenix Dive Scorch will cause them to ignite and surely kill them. And you'll be able to extend that restoration there. However, I will give you a little point of advice while you're doing this, is that when you manage to get the restoration going and extend the timer of it, do not Phoenix Dive again. 
because if you phoenix dive again it is going to reset your restoration timer back down to three seconds so if you have it up at 12 seconds keep it there don't phoenix dive again you only phoenix dive if you happen to lose the restoration and since we're here i'll give you another little piece of advice but if you are using the celestial fire melee ability it may sometimes bug out and even if you get a final blow with it it may not proc sun bracers this happens especially more so in higher level content and I don't know why it happens. Maybe the Scorch kills the enemy and it doesn't count the Scorch as proccing Sunbracers. It's weird, it's buggy, I don't know why it happens. Um, I still prefer Celestial Fire because of the range of it. You can map enemies from way far away and proc Sunbracers more often. And Incinerator Snap is probably a little less consistent in that matter and uh, more narrow. However, some players may prefer it. So if you run Incinerator Snap, I would highly recommend pairing it with Ember of Ashes that says you apply more Scorch stacks to targets because one single Incinerator Snap can easily ignite a target when you have Ember of Ashes equipped. And for some weird reason, the Solar Ignition from the Incinerator Snap will proc Sun Bracers. So Incinerator Snap is gonna be stronger for straight up killing one single target with it. One piece of trash mob or even a major, if they're like at half health, that ignition does a lot of damage. You kill them with that, you get the Sun Bracers online. So it's gonna be a lot more consistent to run Incinerator Snap if you're in close proximity. However, the Celestial Fire does have the benefit of the range so it's up to you which one you prefer and of course the benefit of a celestial fire is that you can run that ember of resolve so that your grenade final blows cure you because these other three fragments are too important i would say now speaking of other fragments let's talk about them here ember of searing and ember of singeing are how we are essentially going to get an extremely fast cooldown of our phoenix dive and our solar melee ability it's pretty ridiculous. It's pretty much like infinite uptime as well. It's just infinite ability spam for all three of your abilities with this build because everything you hit is going to become scorched, whether it be by your melee or your grenade, everything is going to proc these perks. But Ember of Searing also serves a couple other purposes. Defeating Scorched Targets grants melee energy and also creates a Fire Sprite. Now, what do Fire Sprites do for us? Well, they grant us grenade energy as well as they proc our artifact mod. And that brings us to Solar Surge. Collecting a Fire Sprite gives you armor charge and it's gonna be two stacks of armor charge for that. And when we kill that Scorched Target with that nade, it's also gonna generate an orb of power and picking up an orb is gonna give us another stack of armor charge. So that right away, just from one nade kill, is going to be three stacks of armor charge. And why do we want armor charge? Well, that brings us to our mod on our gloves here, Melee Kickstart. It says that when your melee is fully expended, you gain some melee energy back. However, it also consumes all of your armor charge stacks and grants you additional melee energy for each stack you had. So it's a pretty good chunk of melee energy back when you use your melee. And on top of that, you can throw out your Phoenix Dive right after and proc triple outreach on your class item. So just like that, you have a lot of your melee charge back immediately after using it. And remember that that melee is going to scorch targets, which is going to proc the Ember of Searing to refund you even more melee energy, but it still doesn't stop there. Because on our boots, we have a copy of Invigoration. We're making orbs everywhere with the Sun Bracer. So we pick up those orbs and we get melee cooldown. But it still doesn't stop there because Heat Rises also says that final blows while airborne grant melee energy and it is a lot of melee energy. It's like 30%, it's ridiculous. So pretty much with this build, you also have infinite melee spam. So you have infinite uptime of sun bracers pretty much. And note that you don't need to have heat rises proc to have that ability. You don't have to consume your nade all you have to do is kill something while in the air. You can just literally jump shot something and you get a lot of melee energy back. But if that wasn't enough, we have even more melee energy in the form of our weapon of choice here, the brand new iterative loop, which is a craftable Neo Muna weapon. Now, as a build crafter, I can tell you from experience, this weapon is going to be revolutionary in this game for melee spam builds. This thing is a savior for melee spam builds, let me tell you. So as a rapid fire, quick charge time weapon, you can craft on enhanced lead from gold and enhanced pugilist. Now, Pugilist says the final blows are gonna give you some melee energy back. Now, normally, perks like Demolitionist and Pugilist would give you 10% of your energy back on final blows for primary ammo weapons and for heavy weapons. However, but for special weapons specifically, not counting tracer rifles, so, you know, fusion rifles, shotguns, that kind of stuff, 
Your final blows are going to grant you 20% of your ability energy back, but for enhanced versions, it's gonna give you 22% of your ability energy back. So you get a massive chunk of melee energy back on final blows with this thing as a rapid fire frame. So that is very, very powerful for melee spam. Now I'll show you a little example right here of why this is so good. I'm gonna throw away my melee. I'll jump in the air because of Heat Rise's airborne ability. I'll get two final blows and just like that, I have my entire melee energy back. It is pretty ridiculous for melee spam. Now, some of you guys who frequent my build videos, whenever a melee spam build comes up, I have often used the Mindbender's Ambition because you can get Pugilist and Incandescent on it. And you know, with Ember of Searing, we want to scorch things, so Incandescent's great, but also it is a special weapon with Pugilist, so you get 20% energy back on final blows. Also, it's solar, so with Ember of Empyrean, you can extend the duration of your restoration. So why am I not using this weapon? Well, the thing about this weapon is it's just so sluggish, man. You gotta be so close range and it reloads very, very slow. The handling is awful. While it may be better on paper, it, it just doesn't feel that great to use. And honestly, having a rapid fire frame fusion, you can battle at a longer distance and also reload your whole mag in one go instead of reloading each individual shell and you have enhanced perks. It is just so much better, let me tell you. Like, even though it's not gonna extend that Ember of Empyrean, it's just so much better as a weapon. Now, before we talk about the rest of our mods as well as the rest of our weapons, I wanted to talk about Touch of Flame real quick. So it enhances those solar grenades, so it shoots those little lava blobs out of them. You know, you get more Scorch, more Radius, all the good stuff. So it makes sense to run Heat Rises in Touch of Flame. But me personally, I can't live without the movement of Icarus Dash. So after this video is over, I'm probably gonna put Icarus Dash back on instead of Touch of Flame. But it's up to you. If you can live without Icarus Dash, this would be an ideal setup. Now for the rest of our mods, we have triple ashes to assets on our helmet. Of course, these are flexible, but since you're throwing a lot of nades, you're gonna get a lot of super energy, a ton. And then on our gloves, we also have a copy of Bolstering Detonation, so we get some Phoenix Dive energy back when we cause damage with a grenade, so that is going to be a lot, obviously. On our chest, we just have a couple of resist mods here for the heck of it. And then I have a copy of Solar Reserves and Scavenger, which we'll get to when we talk about our weapons. And uh, I went over the rest of it pretty much throughout this video. So this is the loadout that I found to be the most effective for me personally, Wither Horde with the Iterative Loop and the Unwavering Duty Adept. Now, I would highly recommend a solar machine gun or, you know, anything that is full auto because you want to be able to prime those targets and get them weak so that your solar melee can kill them so you can proc the Sun Bracer's perk. So a full auto weapon would be great for this. You know, if you ran a solar rocket, then of course there also is the Monte Carlo in the kinetic slot as well for your melee cooldown. Because, you know, with Sun Bracers, it's not really discipline you're specking into, it's more melee because that is how you even proc the Sun Bracer's perk in the first place. Now, uh, the Unwavering Duty Adept, with the Field Prep perk paired with Solar Reserves, you can carry up to 450 ammo with this thing. It is pretty ridiculous, and that's gonna make your scavenger really effective, and you're pretty much gonna have an infinite uptime of machine gun ammo, especially more so since you're running double special weapons. Because you're running double special, you get more heavy drops, and vice versa, you get you know, heavy kills, you get more special drops. So they feed into each other. So this is a loadout that I found to be very effective. Now I have messed around with a lot of different things. You know, the, the Skyburner's Oath, for example, if you hip fire with it, it does scorch targets, making it so that you will proc the Ember of Searing. So that is pretty cool with the Skyburner's Oath. There is also the Prometheus Lens, which sustained damage with this weapon applies scorch. So that will also proc the Ember of Searing. So very good for getting your melee cooldown back and creating fire sprites. However, I just felt like the machine gun and this setup was better, you know, having Wither Horde sticking it to them um, makes it good for just dealing a lot of damage to fatter targets. Now, if the primary goal here is to extend the restoration with a solar weapon final blow with Ember of Empyrean within three seconds of Phoenix diving after Heat Rises is procced, what better way to do that than a solar machine gun? However, even more so, the Xenophage is an all-star for this. Just, I challenge you to name a better weapon than Xenophage to get a solar weapon final blow in a three-second time frame. Xenophage is pretty solid for that. 
Also, there's solar rockets, you know, like Gallarhorn and Roar of the Bear. At that point, you'd have to run a full auto primary weapon in the top slot. But yeah, these are all pretty good options. Now with this build, we're aiming for a 100 recovery and a minimum of at least three intellect. The rest is really up to you. I invested 100 in strength. However, that is really not required because of the ridiculous amount of ways we have to generate melee energy. You really don't need strength investment at all. In fact, I would probably invest 100 in resilience, which I'm probably gonna rework my build to do that as well. And I also opted for a bit of discipline as well to proc that initial heat rises. Don't really need that though, because the fire sprites generate grenade energy as well as your sun bracers activation. So being real here, you could just invest triple 100s in resilience, recovery, and intellect because there's plenty of ways to generate your other ability energies. So that is pretty much gonna wrap it up for the sun bracers perfected 2.0 build let me know what you think about it and as always if you have any questions feel free to ask and if you have any suggestions on what could possibly make the build even better let me know i'd like to try it out and as usual i will leave a dim link to this loadout in the description and in the pinned comment if you would like to give the build a try closing thoughts i really sincerely believe that sun bracers is now a top contender for end game content it used to just be a meme, it used to be for patrol level content, but now it is some serious business with all these reworks. Don't sleep on the sun bracers. You can even do a decent amount of damage to bosses who have trash mobs around them with these things. You can do a lot of scorch damage to them and also the sun bracers themselves extend the duration of your solar grenades so they linger around longer, scorch more amounts of times. They're pretty good. And not to mention if you pair it with a demolitionist rocket launcher or breach loaded grenade launcher, you can proc that demolitionist and auto load your stuff a lot more often with the sun bracers. So it's a pretty solid combo as well that I should have talked about earlier. So that's gonna do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and drop a comment because interacting with the video in those kinds of ways really helps it out, helps the algorithm. And if you have any buddies who are Warlock mains, perhaps Solar Warlock mains, feel free to share this video with them. I'm sure they'd find it enjoyable. And if you are new here, consider subscribing. Would love to have you here. We do crazy builds all the time. And with that, I'll catch you in the next video. Later.